Alrighty, we are live. Let's go. All right, welcome everyone. For those joining back in the recording, we're just going to be doing some airship designs today. Um, and also, my name is Gabriel Quinn. I am an illustrator and concept artist, viz dev artist, whatever you want to call it. I design stuff for games and animation, and it's a whole lot of fun. And uh, yeah, today I'm just going to be going over some designs that I've been working on for a while and just talking about design in general, like what you, well, basically the premise is I want to use airships as a vessel for kind of testing your knowledge, testing your skills in world building um, and why like certain key props are like very good at that. Um, cool, cool, cool. So before we get started, I'm just going to chuck the link up. For the returning viewers, you know the drill. I'm just going to throw the link up on Instagram so that people can find the stream if they wish. Um, also, let me change the chat settings. It keeps changing the chat settings so I can't see certain people. Oh, Ayub's in the chat. Let's go. What's up, buddy? What is up, buddy? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we're just going to be doing airships today, man. Airships are a whole lot of fun. Some of my favorite uh, subject matter to work on. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty great time. Cool, cool, cool. Let's do a new post. Sweet. So, last time on the stream... We uh, went through a lot of portfolio work that I've been working on for like a long time and uh, essentially like boiled it down onto a Miro board, which we can look at again. This work is from a project that I wasn't able to cover during that time. So we can just kind of pull that up actually if we want um, and we can kind of, uh, yeah, we can go from there. We can figure it out. Yeah. Hopefully my Wi-Fi is good today. It was like been super rough the past few days or whatever, but uh, hopefully nothing goes horribly wrong today. Oh, what up, Mojo? Welcome. Got a couple of the homeboys in chat. Let's go. Um, we did another character design challenge in the Patreon Discord. And let me pull up <laughs> what we did. It was really fun. <laughs> yeah, okay. So so we um we have been doing these like character design challenges together, which has been pretty fun. And uh one that I did last night with Colin, uh who's uh, a dope friend is we we do a character design in one challenge. So in this one in particular, the prompt was biscuit soldier. So <laughs> Colin made this awesome guy like look at this character. It's so good um, Yeah, so Colin just killed it man um, That's Colin Philgate He's a cool dude you can find him on Instagram for sure and then I designed this rat That made its armor out of like a biscuit tin like a guard like a guard soldier I don't know it was I thought it was pretty fun so like the idea like they're like clamping off pieces of this biscuit tin to make like elaborate armor but it's just like a box so that was fun and the hour-long uh deadline is like super tight so it's like you got to think on your feet and i don't know i just followed the idea it was pretty cool and uh yeah hopefully we get the rest of the homies in next time it was an impromptu one so there was very little warning um cool 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 so let's bring this out of here um, and yeah, we're going to do one tomorrow as well. So tomorrow that one's happening towards like midday EST. So that'll be dope. That'll be dope. Oh, nice. All right. We got nabs in the chat. Mojo, AU, we got all the regs, all the regulars. So here, I guess we can kind of kick it off a little bit. So what I'm going to be doing is talking about some of these airship silhouettes, designs, you know, making sure those designs read and they kind of like make sense. And then also uh, we're going to be talking about putting those ideas in like a narrative context, you know? So this is a very much a work in progress right now, super rough image, but um, essentially, and mind you, I'm not an illustrator, so <laughs> VizDev, well, you know, we 
we we painted up or whatever but uh all right mojo dude check back later for sure we're gonna talk about some cool stuff um but yeah so we got our kind of pirate ship stuff so you can kind of see like the giant silhouette of this ship in the background this ship in the foreground kind of making an attack on some civilian ships and that kind of helps you to understand what's happening narratively and then we move into sort of some call outs yeah airships airships baby let's go bugsy welcome to the chat bugsy um so these guys are pretty fun like we kind of have this giant mothership idea and we have all the other ships that kind of surround it and whatnot um scale wise this is actually a little bit small for the concept and scale really matters with this stuff so this would actually make more sense with the scale of these other ships um possibly even bigger but it's like a big big ship uh, and if you're wondering what this document is, I'm putting together a book portfolio for this upcoming Lightbox Expo. Um, yeah, trying to get hired at Riot or DreamWorks or somewhere cool. So we're putting together a, a, a Chad portfolio if we can. Um, yeah, and then kind of moving on with even even more designs. So this is also kind of a work in progress that I, I could be working on today. So we'll kind of see what we want to work on. The other thing we want to talk about um, is uh, just like, yeah, thematic function, these different elements of design that come into play when we're talking about airships in particular, because airships are a focus of design. Um, and they're very, 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 like, misunderstood misrepresented all that stuff like it's it's uh very very hard to make an airship actually realistic but nobody knows any facts about airships so also this is an assignment in one of my in my mentorship is that you have to design an airship so when i when i launch the mentorship <laughs> if you want to join i'll put you through this ringer too man mm. man i love coffee so much I love drinking it. I love making it. I love smelling it. I love buying it. I love talking to people who are into it. It's just the best, man. Okay, so I'm also going to pull up another sheet uh, that is relevant. So essentially, we went through a ton of work on the last stream. And we're not going to review all of it, but we're going to look over just a little bit of it. Um, ooh, also, I have to send a text super quick. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, da, ba, ba. I'm sending a text. Yeah. Cool. Um, before we get started, does anyone have any questions or any thoughts or any anything such as that? I mean, I know we haven't actually kicked off into it, so, you know. Gosh. Um, there's, like, this new tab function where, like, you can have, like, duplicated tabs on different screens, and it's weird. It keeps, like, dimming or whatever. All right. Oh, we got HD in the chat. Welcome, welcome. Bugsy said, funny enough, airship carriers were once an idea in real life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were, man. Airship carriers are really cool. Yeah, well, there's a there's a lot of cool information um, about airships and stuff, which is pretty interesting. But airships carrying planes could, in theory, work because the right planes could be very light. So that's actually okay. But I know there are some ideas out there where they have, like, these airships and there's, like, a whole city on top of it or something like that. Or, like, a whole, like, yeah, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So there are some, man. Well, we talked earlier in the stream about grounded design and ungrounded design, so that this really comes into play for sure um, in this concept. So, okay, what are we looking at here? So, this is a ton of concept work I did for the Fish World IP that I have in development. It's very, very far into development. Like, I have a lot of it down. Not all of it is here as well. Um, but in this suite of ideas we have some airships. So we had some fish airships. We had some, you know, other airships based on like fishing. You know, they would shoot nets and like carry these giant sacks of fish back to the to the island where they would feast on the fish. Um, 
So like these different ideas, this idea, the lure vessel, one of my stronger ideas, I think, um, which lures fish to the surface for the fishing ships to spot and then, you know, catch or shoot nets out. So these are some of the ideas that we're talking about. And again, the theme of this whole stream today is going to be world building, design, and again, like why airships are such a great tester for your knowledge. So when you're building a world, you need rules to the world. So, well, it's helpful. I won't say you need anything, right, for world building. Any Building a world, it's your world. You can do whatever you want. Um, however, one thing that can assist in achieving like a real emotional tangible engagement with your audience is making sure that the limitations on your world are clear and felt because that is what is going to give you the uh that's what's going to give you the option to create drama and conflict is through those limitations um for instance like there are a lot of examples where limitations are broken and the audience feels betrayed like the scene in star wars where you know this is a spoiler for the for the uh, sequel sequels, the Disney sequels, which were, you know, that the uh, like, like I, I literally said Mary Poppins in my mind. But uh, when Princess Leia like flies through space or when the ship goes into hyperspace and explodes the other thing or when like, you know, Ray just does whatever with no training, like the audience felt betrayed because the limitations were betrayed. Um, and those limitations are what gave the world meaning in the first place. So no wonder they felt betrayed. Right. These are all things to know. So we're going to be talking about, we're going to be bouncing between these two kind of worlds and concepts back and forth. Um, and we can honestly do that on the same Photoshop file. I mean, there's no, there's no rules. So I'm going to grab this guy. So what's fun about this project is that this is actually, I did this about a year ago. So these designs were from about a year ago. And uh, were they from a year ago? I'm trying to think. Yes. Yeah, they were. Yeah. So these designs were from, from about a year ago. Uh, maybe a little longer. And my goodness, were they a lot of fun to do. So I'm just going to keep dragging them in. We're doing this just kind of very quick and dirty, you know, no rules really. The one I'm looking to actually get a lot of headway on is actually these fishing ones because these have been sitting in development for a very long time, but I haven't actually brought them into a resolution yet. So this is going to be a fun kind of like retrospective and also just like a bit of an update as well. So that's going to be cool. You can see I put some I put some like lore text, you know? People love lore text. The lore vessel is a two-man airship. It floats above the water to to lure schools of fish close to the surface. This allows the larger fishing vessels to follow behind and harvest the enamored creatures. Risk may occur if fishing continues late into the night when the larger creatures often spot the light. Also, bonus points if you add a rhyme cuz it's cryptic. And Nab says, Mary Poppins, my favorite Star Wars character. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was just like very, very strange. Um, and again, the reason why, this is what I don't think people understand about the whole conflict with those Star Wars sequels, is that the reason why uh, so many people felt so betrayed um, was because Star Wars is like such an incredible world. You know, designed, created by like thousands of people. Again, every year new stuff is being created, new stuff is being created. And when Disney came and just kind of like eroded the entire, you know, New Republic and all this content and then just made absolute garbage, like, of course, people got upset. You know, it was like desecrating a, a real incredible work of art, um, which it's not just like George Lucas made a world. It's like, you know, George Lucas pitched an idea and thousands of people made a world, you know. Hey, we got Colin in the chat. What's up? I shouted out your biscuit soldier earlier. It was epic. Um, okay, so then let's review here. So we're going to have to section this off now. This is kind of a, you know, I was thinking 
how I wanted to design the portfolio book. And initially I thought like an A4 vertical, but I'm thinking more like A4 horizontal these days. Oh, we got Salmon in the chat. What's up? So I was kind of pitching ideas for some of these airships and some of these scenes. So like I was originally going to try kind of a far away scene, maybe some text over here. I was going to try some, you know, this dynamic scene, which is the one I'm going to go with most likely. Um, I was also going to try maybe a very close up scene where you're then looking down on a battle happening between these airships. And what's cool is that when you're designing this stuff, right, this is a more dynamic shot from a vertical um, composition. But yeah, the one I'm going to go with is probably, and oh, we got some characters here. <laughs> These are some mechanics that I'm developing and working on. Like <laughs> they're trying to fix an engine while they're in the air. And he has a pipe on during a hydrogen tank reset. And, you know, it's just funny, funny stuff, humor. Um, here we can see me like pushing a design. So having a kind of smaller design and then pushing it to be much more extreme. Nice. But yeah, just like trying a whole bunch of stuff and then the kind of like page layouts, you know, it's good stuff. This is from another IP. This is unrelated. <laughs> it's a crowded PSD. I should start naming these. That would help me, I think. So, okay. Fish world, baby. So if I wanted to, I could probably composition two of these pages together, um, which means I probably take the, the lure vessel and the fishing ships into these two pages, right? So I added a couple guides boop, to help me understand where my pages will be in the future. It's pretty cool. Alrighty. So let's talk a little bit about airships before we do anything else. So let's pull up, some, pull up an image of an airship. So if you think that airships are kind of like just like a giant balloon and it's just kind of filled with some hot air, that's not necessarily correct or true. There's like a lot of stuff going on. So I got to find a competent. Diagram. OK, this one's good. So let's take this image, for instance. This is from somewhere on the internet. No credit given, sue me. So let's look at this. This is essentially breaking down what's happening inside of a Zeppelin. So it's not just the thing is filled with air. There's actually 17 rubberized cotton fabric cells that have like a ton of hydrogen. It's like a lot. And it takes a lot of hydrogen to actually lift. Um, a vessel like a lot it's not a little it's a lot so when you're designing an airship you got to think about like ratios right um there's also what happens is on the inside the way that lift is created and that also you know descent happens is that there are like other cells that compress air inside let's see if we can get another cool diagram oh this one's nice can i get a higher res version of this please Doing some live research here. Yeah, okay, so check this out. It's really cool, man. It's really, really cool how it works. This one is talking about helium because they moved to helium after, you know, the, the uh, Hindenburg. Oopsie. Um, but yeah, you can see all of these gas bags, right? So many tiny cells of gas bags. It's not just one giant thing. Because if it was a giant thing and it popped, the thing would just go down, right? But, you know, no one really opens up an airship for you. 
<laughs> Colin says, I'm just filled with hot air. Um, that's so interesting, Salmon. California bees are legally considered fish to protect them as a part of biodiversity. That's sick. It's also cursed, but you know. Listen, all I'm saying is when Arnold Schwarzenegger was the governor of California, things are a little bit better in the world. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. No other claims. Um, okay, so yeah, let's take a look at this. So we've got hydrogen sacks. We've got these airbags, and the airbags expand and contract, right? And they compress and whatever. So the more air that is kind of like filled the space and the more compressed it is, the you know, descent and rise. Similar concept to how submarines work, right? Um with like ballast and stuff. And then also with fish too. Fish use these like sacks of gas inside them to make sure that they can stay at their appropriate height. TXLR says, hello, welcome to the chat, TXLR. Let's go. So we are learning some facts right now about airships. And this stuff is really cool. Oh, we also got ash. Let's go ash. So when I was researching for my fish world project, I got really into airships because look at these things. They're so interesting. There's uh, ba bags of compressed air, bags of gas, all this stuff. There's like these valves, engines, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, look at this entire size of gas bags to like the ratio of the gondola, like what it's actually lifting, right? The math is not mathing for our designs. When we look back at our designs, right, especially, especially uh, even this one, this is not possible in real life at all. Like, not even close. So let's pull up a... Let's pull up an airship from the show... From the show... Let's pull up an airship from the show Arcane. We love Arcane. Arcane is sick. Okay, this one we're going to have to... We're going to have to credit this one because this is a dope artist and we, we, we credit artists. Let's see if you can find it properly. Yeah, here we go. Oh my goodness. Look at this guy. So sick. I'm nervous about opening art station on stream because like, you know, people sell reference packs or whatever that are not <laughs> clean, <laughs> not made for work. Um, so let's look at this world building here. First of all, gorgeous painting. Incredible, right? And this is Thomas Osang Moir. Moir? 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 I don't know. But let's look at this, right? Beautiful airship. Gorgeous. In the distance. Even here. Look at it. Like, that's such a cool design, right? Very good use of silhouette. Very good use of all this stuff. It's really great. Painted up very well. And the original drawing was done by a really, really incredible artist, too. Um, actually, we're going to follow this guy. We like this guy. Um, yeah, so the guy who did the original layout drawing for this is a really cool dude. Guy who painted it is this guy, a really excellent guy. Um, let's make sure we have the chat open just in case. I'm not, I'm not missing anything. Um, Bugsy says, when thinking about airships, you also have to think what materials used for canopy. Exactly. You have to think of everything. Um Yeah, exactly, Bugsy. That's exactly right. So, so yeah, we're looking at this scene here. Even this airship, right? Which is like wire-framed, you know, the materials here look like a canvas material. It's kind of not a super high-tech one. There are more beautiful ones in the world of Arcane, but like looking at this, this balloon to ship size, this would not leave the ground. Not even close. Like not even remotely close would this airship leave the ground. But this is one of the common lies we see in design, right? Also, the logistics of airships. Like, airships don't fly well. Like, they're slow, and they're, like, they don't, they, they're not nimble at all, right? They tried using sails at one point to power airships, and it did not work. They just blew around like crazy because they need some kind of direction. So how airships works is you need to generate force. So they can't run on sails. They can't do anything like that. So you need like uh, engines to power these things. 
Uh, so, okay, we've looked at this design, and this is from one of the most, this is the most successful animated show of the year that it, that it released, right? So Arcane is incredible. The team, incredible. Designers, fantastic. And yet, we're still breaking these rules, right? So we're talking about the balance of grounded to ungrounded design. So let's flip back to what we're working on here, right? An airship like this. A giant airship like this. Huge. Which also, the magenta is up for debate. I'm not sold on it. I'm just trying stuff out. Okay? So don't don't come after me for my use of magenta here. Um, but yeah, so a ship like this would not leave the ground, especially the scale that this is implying. Like this, and, and this, you know, there's so many things here that would not be possible in real life. However, we want to sell the idea that it could fly. It doesn't matter if it could fly. We want to sell the idea that it could fly. So let's think about this, like, actually. Let's do a little test here, a little sketch test. So we have our pen, our, our stylus, um, which is living in our, our wonderful stylus holder. Look at this guy. Look at him. Look how cute he is. He's so cute. This was made by uh, a dear friend of mine, Prashan, who's an excellent 3D modeler. Um, he's a cool, he's a really cool guy. We love Prashan. And, and Prashan was my first ever patron. Pretty cool. Pretty cool guy. Um, alrighty. Yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah, Prashan is a G. Incredible 3D artist. So, all right, let's take a look here. So, knowing what we know now, right? So we have like the hydrogen cells that we need to include, airbags we need to include. We have the actual gondola is what they call it, right? Which rests underneath. We have the actual balloon. These are the elements, the engines as well. So we got to think about the ratio and we got to think about like, okay, so if the gondola is a certain size and the balloon is a certain size, it needs this size engines. If we have this size of a gondola and this size of a thing, then we need this size of a balloon. So... If we were to think realistically, let's say we try to do a similar design, right? So we have like this metal thing with a spike and like the big eye, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And it's like this big balloon thing. And we're going to make it even like less intense, right? We're just going to do like a little less intense. Let's say this is our thing. And we have an engine here. It's going engine here. Like smoke. For this to leave the ground, the balloon would have to be like this big, dude. Like minimum. Like it would have to be huge. Just absolutely giant. But we don't really want a giant balloon design, right? Because again, we want huge, massive, gorgeous scale. Um, so then we think to ourselves, how much balloon do we need to make it feel like it could fly? So if we go back to our design, right? Which when you look at it in contrast, wow. Now we know this thing wouldn't fly. But, you know, there's pretty much enough balloon like to make us feel like it could fly like this thing could probably this thing could probably fly right if we tone down things a little bit this thing could fly been doing a lot of edits on it so bear with but, but yeah this thing could probably fly just do like a little, just a little bit here and there, you know, push this, take this back a little bit. Feel like, you know, bring this down a little bit. Leave some of this stuff alone. <laughs> also, have you guys seen that meme where it's like the, it's like Akira and they're like, Akira, what's wrong? And he's like, leave me alone. And he like, you know, <laughs> hides his face. I love that meme so much. It's so good. Uh... For me, it's like bad airship designs. So let's actually. <laughs> so if I look at. If I look at fantasy airships. And I just pull it up. I just pull up some fantasy airships. Knowing what we know now, right? All right. Turning safe search on. <laughs> so yeah. So like knowing what we know now, 
Let's see. Let's ask the chat. Would this thing fly? Well, this is made of Lego. It doesn't count. Even something like this. This thing would not fly. Not even close. Not even a little bit close, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Bugly. Bugs. Yeah, I see this. Leave me alone! Bling! <laughs> and this thing pops up, and I'm like, wah! This thing would not fly. Never in hell would this fly. Ever. <laughs> Colin says it's actually got the house from up from up inside making it float <laughs> dude hell yes that movie was really good e well again that movie did the ratio right that ratio was like really good they made it believable this thing never in hell would this fly because here's another aspect about it this is patinaed copper baby this thing is made of metal you're asking me to believe this will fly never in hell however if you asked me before, yeah, if you asked me before, like, like, oh, you know, like, do you think this would fly? Like, maybe I would believe it before I knew anything about airships. So here's the thing. You're also, like, you're also, like, really uh, relying on people's ignorance because nobody knows how airships work. It's a lost uh, technology. This thing could not fly, would not fly. This thing, never in hell could this fly Ever. What even is this? What's going on here? And I'm not saying these things are unappealing designs, right? This is getting there, but again, the ratio's off. Not enough balloon. Also, jet engines? Dude. Sorry, I should not rag. These are real people who have designed these ships and uh, who are, like, drawing the stuff and, you know, are into it. And this is the thing is that like if you're a concept artist and you're designing from a technology and you don't know anything about the technology, you're going to be at a disadvantage to yourself. This is from, this is from a, okay, this isn't really anything. Let's look at this. Okay, this is good. We love this. This is getting the ratio really right. Giant balloon, the mast and the materials are maybe a bit much here and there with like the wood style, but the actual ship to to thing here this is really good actually this is well informed and like done right however it's implying that they use sails which is not possible so they lose points <laughs> ah yeah exactly if it has jets why even bother <laughs> um hd says the ghibli movies have a lot of airships that would be interest interesting to look over so this is a great point and this is kind of where I'm leading. And in my mentorship, I actually direct the students to the Ghibli films for reference, right? All right, we have to open it in a tab off screen because we don't want to fall out of YouTube guidelines. Okay, this is fine, it looks like. So, but Ghibli, Ghibli has a lot of airships, but the airships themselves are usually not like they're not like uh well no there's some airships but again you got to remember Hayao Miyazaki our boy grew up on an airbase dude World War II airbase so he's in it he loves flying craft this thing give me a break look at this this can't fly hell no hell no this thing Never, ever could this ever fly. Ever. This thing? Maybe. This looks like it's from a long time ago. This is an old school drawing. This is actually sick. I like this. This gets a pass. It's from Final Fantasy. See? Final Fantasy. The realist. Those boys know what they're doing. This thing? Well, I mean, first of all, this is sick. Why does it have sails? <laughs> Why does this have sails? <laughs> It's for the silhouette, bro. It's for the silhouette. You see this happen a lot, especially in game design, where it's like, dude, it looks sick. Why does it matter? This is so cool. I don't even know what this is, but it's cool. This looks like uh, Ian McHugh. Or like a mix between Ian McHugh and somebody. Let's figure out what that is. Oh, sick. Oh, it's a 3D, 3D render paints over. That's dope. Um, okay. 
So boom, boom, boom. We got that. We got that. We got. So yeah, if we look over some Ghibli airships, let's do it. It's a good. That's a good suggestion, actually. Um. All right. Let's see. Let's see. We got some people in the chat here. Nothing even looks clear. Buoyancy ratio. <laughs> Come talk to me about buoyancy ratios one day. <laughs> Exactly, Bugsy. It is about selling the idea. Oh, okay, fair. That's a fair idea. Just put a giant balloon on a galleon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what people do, right? It looks cool. It is cool. Um, so let's look at these Ghibli designs, right? Which is a good suggestion. So, for instance, this one. This one, I believe, it has the giant propellers to propel it forward. It's got a balloon. This is a great image of it, right? So it has enough of the ratio. The wings look thin. Everything looks thin. It looks like it could fly, right? This thing, I mean, this is like this is like cat plane cat bus, right? It doesn't really matter. This is just pure fantasy. This leaves the world of, of needing to believe. But this thing from Laputa, this is great. This is a great design. And again, it looks like it's really made of wood, made of more, or, or made of like a lighter kind of material. This is really working. This thing, talking about airplane carrier things, this is also great. Because look at the ratio between the gondola on the bottom and the actual ships themselves. So cool. This thing, again, great design here. This one is a little less believable. But again, because of the style of animation, you can get away with a little bit more. But this, I still believe this, to be honest. Less so, but I do. Some of my favorite designs are actually coming from Nausicaa, like these giant warships. Because they're the way they fly sell you on their function. Like they're very, very slow and very like... Bwah. So it, you kind of are sold. This, I don't think this is from... This is Ghibli style. This is a fan. These little buzzing things were great design. Because like they don't make any sense but they actually worked really well. Um, from, uh, these are from Castle in the Sky. Very, very cool. The little tiny jet plane was cool, which remind me of the Goblin airplane that Bugsy was talking about, this old school airplane. The thing is, once you get into airships, you can't really stop and you just keep getting into it. Then you're talking about, you know, flying boats and flying this and it's just, it just ends up being really cool. But yeah, great suggestion. This is also pretty cool. All right. So we looked at some examples from our animated shows that we love, animated films that we love. Um, and now we're getting back to the task at hand, which is actually looking at design. So the purpose of this ship, right, is this is supposed to be kind of a command vessel mothership for all the other ships. That's the idea behind this ship and this fleet. Um, of these kind of, you know, rugged, bad kind of dudes, you know? Cool. That's an interesting idea, Bugsy. We don't have the technology to mimic bugs. Yeah, imagine making a little bumblebee flying craft. Because suppose, supposedly they're not supposed to be able to fly, according to aerodynamics. Cool. I'm going to chuck a little tune on for myself. You know, just, it's just something for me, right? Cool. So, this is supposed to exist in a world where we also have these guys, right? So, when talking about world building as well, airships are extremely vulnerable things. They're like very vulnerable right? Bugsy said, wait, wait till we can make ornithopters in the shape of dragonflies. Dude, hell yeah. That was like the coolest part about Dune. That was the only part I liked. Oh, thanks for the clarification, Bugsy. Yeah, because like obviously they can fly, so they should be able to fly because they can. But yeah, no. Bees are not planes. It's true. That's true.
Oh, that's so interesting. One to one to a helicopter. Oh my! Imagine, imagine we have the technology to mimic a a a, a hummingbird. That's insane. Wait, do you think that's possible? Like an actual hummingbird aircraft? Oh, I want to design that now. I really want to design that. Because they fly in a figure eight pattern, right? The wings. Oh, now I want to do like a hard sci-fi concept. Damn. Curse my, curse my uh, insatiable curiosity. Oh yeah, the materials would need to be like synthetic in, in the future that we like don't have them right now. But yeah, okay, so airships are actually very vulnerable. They're vulnerable to a lot, right? Actually, you know what's crazy? After our talk, this airship does not feel like it could fly anymore because I increased the size of a lot of things on it. So the ratio is actually very off on this ship. So we got to fix that. Let's copy it first. Always copy your design, save all the versions, because even if you don't end up needing all the versions in retrospect, it's great to actually look over your past designs, see what works and what doesn't. Boom. Yeah, see, all of a sudden this thing can fly well in the air. Isn't that cool? Who would have thought? Not me. Seeing a little paint over here. <laughs> Man, I'm really trying to improve my painting skills these days. Because uh, I figured for believable concepts, like drawing is the most valuable skill, obviously, in design, right? Because you can draw anything, like, and it's the fastest way to communicate something and make something. But if you're really fast at painting and you're really fast at drawing, it's a pretty deadly combo. We call that one the, the TCK special. Cool. So yeah, we have these ships, right? Also, like one thing that we, yeah, so these ships are very vulnerable. So the only thing that's kind of keeping them out of trouble is, uh, oh, what up, Lashy? Welcome to the chat. Let's go. Um, Bugsy. Um, yeah, welcome to the chat, Lashy. We're talking about airships. Uh, and for anyone joining now or just joining, um, we're talking about how airships are kind of like the perfect way to test your world building knowledge and your world building skills. Because world building is not just designing or building a world. It is your capacity and your ability to research. So we reviewed a lot of different ideas and concepts. Um, from like other artists and stuff and if you're watching this now you're just joining now then you can go back and watch that earlier um, after the stream is over or whenever um, to kind of get an idea of what we're talking about but yeah essentially we are focusing on believability or we're really trying to understand believability right so yeah let's look at these ships so this is kind of a scout ship it's supposed to have like big windows you know it's like spotting things you know you got the captain in the front the guy here the guys here you know it's like you can see through both ends or whatever like it's kind of supposed to be kind of cool um but then also in this world if this is a world of airships then what what better than just like a popping ship a ship that just pulls up and just rips your ship open because again it's not about um it's not about in this case this this kind of sabotage wouldn't bring it wouldn't pop a balloon and it would go and like fall to the ground that was not what happened it would disrupt a large part of the ship so the lift would be gone right it would start to descend the ship if this thing ripped through it you know and the idea is that it's not that big ratio wise so yeah even even here it would be a little bit smaller i think than this large ship the popper ship would be about this big so against a giant ship like this the popper you know it would be effective but it wouldn't be as effective as per se like a smaller ship so if this one came and out of nowhere and was able to get a smaller ship then it's like that ship's going down you know it's going down for sure yeah lurk away bugsy no worries i appreciate the commentary And if anyone has any questions in the chat, feel free to ask. Ask away, ask away. 
So when putting these ships in context, we got to think like, all right, how are these things going to battle or how are these things going to operate? Because this world is essentially a world of sky pirates. That's the point. So let's refer back to the mirror board um, and we can get it going. Oh, man, the new safari is weird. Super weird. Oh yeah, also I saw that message Lashy and uh, yeah, you should definitely do a, a biscuit night, do a one hour biscuit night. Cool. <laughs> Man. Okay, okay, let's let's do this. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, that's super weird. Okay, so let's let's pull up this uh, our portfolio Miro board. Um We've, where we've laid everything out. We've laid it all out, man. And one thing we didn't lay out last time was the Sky Pirate stuff. So here's something that you can take a look at. Here's all of the Sky Pirate work that I've done. So we have our character, Kel, who's kind of like, you know, an important character in the Sky Pirate story. It's like their story is very chaotic and it's sort of, he's a pretty mindless kind of character, classic, you know, like uh, very much loves violence, all that stuff, right? Um just kind of classic, classic chaotic evil character who, you know, maybe has a redemption later. We also have an old keyframe I was working on. This is a very old keyframe, um, again, from about half a year ago. And this is blocked in, obviously, you see the birds blocked in here. And this has been transformed and it's going to become a larger keyframe for the world. So it's going to become this shot of a battle happening, um, potentially, you know, I might redo it, I might not, but this ship in the foreground is giving me, you know, some cool vibes. We got some cool energy, some kind of foreground stuff, things happening on the clouds. Like we really want to sell the fluffiness of the clouds and that these ships just come out of the clouds and ambush, right? And then we go, ba -ba -ba -ba. we have the larger ship call out and stuff, but, but yeah. Oh, we got a question in chat. Uh, Lashy says, do they use ropes to connect the big balloon with the ships? So in actual rigid airships, they don't really use ropes. It's just kind of fuse. It's one unit. Um, so yeah, in our earlier discussion, we go over a lot of designs of airships and how a lot of them are just very incorrect and won't, won't work. We went over the science of how they fly. I mean, we went over the ideas and the elements that make them fly, not the science itself. I could not do that. Maybe we'll have my girlfriend on the stream. She can explain. Explain how it works. <laughs> um, but Lashy says, I will tomorrow. Didn't manage today. Oh, dude, no rush, no rush. Orgro, Orgro, or Ogro Colo asks, and also welcome to the chat and welcome to the stream. Uh, I haven't seen you here before, so welcome. Did you ever feel insecure to put a drawing or something that already exists talking talking it out loud is kind of weird it doesn't even make sense but i feel that all the time okay okay so this question is a great question do you ever feel insecure doing a drawing of something that already exists so this is a question about originality and it's perfect because we're talking about world building that is a perfect question for the stream so something that already exists if you draw, right, a guy with a sword, there are one million, no, there's more. There's like a billion drawings of a guy with a sword that exist, right? Because it's like the one of the oldest archetypal characters, a warrior, right? A warrior man, which is like a whole other thing. A warrior woman is a different archetype, but like that is like a thing, man. There's been like a billion warrior guys drawn throughout the entirety of human history. And that already exists. But that doesn't stop people from drawing them all the time. 
So here's one thing to think about is that if it's if it's a kind of new idea and it gets copied a couple times, it's a ripoff, a copy, it's a knockoff, you know, it's unforgivable. But when enough people make it and draw it, it becomes a genre. It becomes an archetype, right? Think about like uh, the cowboy movie. If someone makes a cowboy movie, it's a Western. It's not a rip off of such and such director, right? It's like, it's just what it is. But when things are new or novel, it becomes, it becomes a, like an archetype, essentially. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. Or it's not explicitly what we're talking about here, but we're talking about a commonly done subject like airships, and we're trying to put a fresh, not, not even a fresh spin, but we're trying to make it make sense in the context of our world. Because the fresh spin maybe isn't the idea itself or the thing that you're drawing, but it's like the, fr it's not even a fresh spin. It's like, what's true for you, man? You know, like even this, if you break down any story, the story has been told before every single story. I mean, we brought up arcane earlier. That is just another story. Um, it's like, uh, um, young, young orphan siblings who become rivals. That's like a really old story. That's a common story. You know, one gets taken in here, one gets taken in there. They grow in different ways. You know, one is shocked by the other one's development and how dark they become. Like that is an archetype. That's a story that's been told before. Um, but they put it in the world of arcane. They tell it the way they tell it, and it becomes something fresh and unique and beautiful. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see. But yeah, does that does that answer your question, Ogro? Or do you have some more thoughts on the subject? Cool. Because even Guy with a Sword, right? So... I was doing some ideas for, this is like, just like a layout page for a portfolio. So this is, I have doubles for placeholders, but talking about guy with sword or knight with a sword, for me, the idea here to keep it fresh or to keep it true for me is um, this character, Frederick, Sir Frederick, who has a curse. And because he has a curse at nighttime or whatever, I haven't figured it out yet, but at nighttime, he becomes essentially like a goblin man. So he's like super cast out and like super taboo and like people don't like him in his own army, but he serves because he wants to, uh, he wants to serve his people, protect the kingdom and all that stuff, right? Because he has the curse, he can wield this ancient demon blade, right? This is a low res version of this image. He ha he can wield this demon blade when he, you know, becomes accursed, right? The character's name is, I don't know. It's Sir Frederick, but his true name is Kaith Dwayne the Cursed. Pretty intense, which means, I think, like, of the battle, something of the battlefield, like darkness of the battlefield. Um, oh, Lashy says, I'll go to sleep late here, but I'll check the VOD. Ah, oh, Lashy. <laughs> You're my motivation to start these streams earlier, I swear, just so you can be here with us. Um, also, Bugsy says, Arcane is just a story of your average engineer for... <laughs> True. Um, but yeah, take care, Lashy, man. Much love. I hope you rest up. Um, yeah, and remember, anyone who uh, has any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. But So this character can wield this ancient demon blade, and it's almost all-consuming, right? So he becomes one with the demon blade, and the, the light of his armor is reflecting only the green and the red of this, of this blade, right? So it's like the idea is that he's totally wrapped up, and that's storytelling through light, right? Um, and he's like ripping through all these soldiers and stuff. And at the end of the battle, he like lets the blade cool, you know, he also, before he sheathes it and before he can't touch it anymore during the day. So it's like a whole thing. Um, <laughs> cool. Oh, cool. Well, that's good. Lashy sick. Um, you know, and it's like a, obviously this is like a Peric victory, which is like, you know, they barely won barely, but it's like, he was due to Sir Frederick. Right. And they're all kind of like giving him space and he's, you know, after the battle. So there's a couple other keys I want to include here, but it starts with this kind of, you know, kind gesture before it descends into like the heat of battle. Like the two worlds this character occupies, right? Um, okay, Orgo says, yeah, I think a little in that way, you've come up with an interesting thoughts. I'll think more about that. To me, it's hard to even put on a character clothes that already exists. Okay, interesting 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 yeah well that's that's exactly true like i think that a great question to ask yourself 
oh also for people who are just listening uh, orgo says and that's dumb because everything already exists yeah so i think a question to ask yourself is like what would happen or or what would happen if you came up with something completely novel like what what does that give you um because when we get stuck on these ideas or we get stuck in these concepts like what is that giving you personally because i've also had the same thought in my mind of like this is an original i shouldn't make this it's not i've had the thought of it's not worth making or not worth finishing i have that thought a lot because it's not original um and the more i examined it the more i realized that man i just have so much pressure on myself like so much pressure you know and it's something that we got to talk about as artists man because it's like in order to create from a joyful in order to create good ideas you have to create from a joyful place and if you're not able to create from a joyful free place you're really going to get stuck right all right let's lay out this page for the fish ship so we can think about these conceptually and we can think about our ratios too because the ratios are also off here so what we're going to do is just like page composition wise, we want to make sure there's balance. So if this is here, I want to turn this a little bit up maybe. Do we want this to be how the page ends? Want it to feel like a flow? Well, what if we flipped it and had these on this side? Yeah, that feels nice fish ship in the foreground then we have like the design here drawn kind of simply to show the the ratios and then on this side we have like the lure vessel information maybe up top and then we have like a diagram or something below cool that's a cool idea Uh, Sam N says, is Frederick a human in the day to magnify the revel of him turning into a goblin? Yes, exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah, the reveal. Yeah, exactly. Um, Orgo says, sorry for my bad English. I'm going crazy to talk in English. <laughs> Dude, no, absolutely no worries, man. I mean, if I tried to speak your language, I could not at all. So absolutely no worries. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And for anyone who's afraid to ask questions... Um, if they're not 100% confident in their English, just ask the question. It doesn't matter. Just ask the question. Um, I, I will understand what you are asking. Um, Orgro also says, it's probably just a weird beginner thought. Actually, no. That's actually a very common thought for people. So it is definitely, well, it's going to affect your ability to create a lot in the beginning as a beginner it will affect your capacity to create. Um, but it it definitely has an impact on everyone, right? Especially when designing for story because you'll be like, oh, this is just Little Red Riding Hood or oh, this is just this or oh, this is just this. And you'll think about it and you'll kind of go, oh man, should I even do this? It's just this, you know? And you'll lose confidence in yourself. You'll lose confidence in your own capacity. And that's not a place you want to be in as a creative person. Not even close, baby. Um, Bugsy says, if mother, mother Nature can make a doppelganger effect happen, I mean. what What is that in relation to, Bugsy? I'm a little confused. A doppelganger. Bro, that idea scares me. The idea of like an exact replica of you somewhere horrifying i have like seen people on the internet who look so much like me and it's horrifying i mean now less so because i'm more i'm more generic now because i'm just white guy with a beard and glasses it's just very, it's just a very type of guy you know Uh, Sandman says even nature is not 100% original. 
Mojo says, howdy. And Willow says, yo. And isn't that what twins and triplets are? <laughs> there we go. Based triplet energy. Welcome to the chat, guys. Welcome back, Mojo. Salmon says, is that what you mean by <laughs> maybe? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so, okay, so we talked about all these ideas, you know, these principles of design, principles for originality, these ideas around originality. Um, hmm. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> oh man you guys are funny in the chat so let's pull out our sketch brush all right we're gonna do some we're gonna do some sketching on top so i haven't touched these designs in a very long time so we're gonna have some fun here we're gonna have some fun we're finally gonna draw and just stop talking all the time because we, we've done enough talking. Um, oh, also, guys, I need video topic ideas. And I want to make sure that I'm answering relevant issues that people have around art and drawing and creativity. So if you have any ideas, like for future videos, any requests or anything like that, please comment on this video, your idea. Like I would love to know what what the struggle is for people or like or like what you want to know or what you want to have talked about or whatever and like because uh i definitely want to do more of that stuff for sure so if you guys have any idea definitely drop a comment on this video if you're watching this back um and even if you're in the chat because i'll see it uh, otherwise they kind of just disappear or i kind of forget they're there but comments really help Uh, oh yeah also friendly reminder to subscribe if you're if you're watching and you're learning stuff and you want to catch more catch the vods in the future if you want to you know definitely subscribe man come come hang out we have a good time out here Cool. So the idea is that these ships have these kind of iron chassis or, or like steel chassis and they hold these different things and everything in this world is a, the rule of this world, a fish world, is that everything is a fish. Everything. <laughs> Mojo says can confirm good times. Hell yeah. Bugsy says, butter's only so many permutations before it's turning around on itself. That's true. Um, Bugsy says, through aesthetic, through aesthetics are only the beginning. The real meat comes from the overall cell of the design. Yeah. So you need, also when a true design is aesthetic, that's when you get magic, man. Like even if, I'm not a, I'm not a car guy, but if you're into cars, it's not just how the Bugatti looks. It's that it's so fast. It's so fast on a marvel of engineering. And the design is like sick. You know? It's both. Also, when aesthetics are tied to function, there's just something different, man. That's why people love shoes so much. Shoes are an object of function. The most functional article of clothing we wear, really. Um, that and then like jackets, right? Um... <laughs> Salmon says a video about how to draw clothes when characters are in action, like flowing capes or flowing loose clothes versus tight clothes. Oh, okay, so more technical stuff. All right, all right, sick. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, there yeah, there's some great some great resources out there to learn a lot of technical stuff. I've been back and forth on whether or not I want to teach a lot of technical things. Because I have technical knowledge, I have the knowledge, but there are like a million voices all screaming that information. Like if you look up how to draw a face on YouTube, you will get like one Brazilian results, you know, and they all say the same things, conflicting things. And a lot of the times when I see stuff like that, like they just get it so wrong. It happens more than you think that 
people just start teaching and they don't really know what they're talking about. Um, and for me, someone who learned pretty much everything on the internet, it took a long time for me to figure out who is actually legit and who really knows their stuff, knows what they're talking about. So when it comes to teaching technical things, I almost sometimes have a bit of nervousness because um, I want to make sure that everything I teach is really good information. One of the areas that is severely lacking in the scene on YouTube is like actual storytelling, actual narrative, you know, understanding design, like for real, like people will make a video on shape design and just like have a character that's boxy and a character that's round. And they're like, this is shape design. And it, it bugs me, man. It really bugs me. Um, because the, the world of design is so rich and, uh, like, you know, yeah, bastardizing it into something generic and cheap or clickbaity is very frustrating, man. And people people are posting this stuff and they're speaking with absolute confidence and I can't do that. So even something on clothing folds, like that would be interesting, like breaking down the anatomy of cloth. Some people do it really well. Modern Day James has a great video on, on clothing. Um, oh, I'm receiving a call. But from who? Hmm. I will answer this call because I'm very curious. Okay, B BRB guys, give me give me a quick sec. I am back. Gosh, I thought it was uh, someone I knew, but it wasn't. Cool. It was a rando. A lot of my friends have a lot of eights in their phone numbers. And I got a call from a phone number that has a lot of eights. And I was like, is that, is that, should I answer that? No, shouldn't answer that. Um... He says, I don't care if the door gaps are uneven. I want the. <laughs> uh... Nice. Oh, Salmon, you've seen them sick. So, so for instance, in the James video, like, did you get everything you needed out of it? Or like, do you want more information on clothes? Like, was it like, do you feel like you need some more? Cause you, you said specifically in action, um, so I'm curious like what that looks like for you like or like wanting to learn wanting to, wanting things to be in action like did you feel like you didn't necessarily get that from from the content or there was like a gap there because it is true you can understand things you know to a degree but then it's hard to apply physics and like you know scenarios Putting things in context really helps a lot. A lot of what people used to teach on YouTube is like, here's how to draw a mouth. And they would like do this. And they would like do like a, a mouth. And like, and the teeth are here. And the upper teeth are here. And that's how you draw a mouth from a down angle is this. This is how you draw a mouth from a down angle. And they would have this video. And then it's like you would see everybody drawing like this exact mouth. And it's like they didn't teach you any of the construction, any anatomy. They're just like, this is how you draw a mouth. And it's like, that's what they would teach. So, you know, and they still do that too to this day. Or they like teach aesthetics or they, you know, I don't know. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's a great quote, Bugsy. Um, I can't say it on stream, but it's a great quote. Ogro says, I think that a video on discipline and consistency is a great idea. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Discipline and consistency. I'll make a, I'll make a little note for some of this stuff.
Yeah. Also, if you if you uh, join the Patreon Discord, there's a whole section for suggesting stream topics. So if you want me to suggest something like live on stream, um, or like have a theme for the stream live that you can then ask questions about, then that's that that is available. But I am thinking about scripting videos. So discipline and consistency. Um, we also had one on flowing clothes tight versus loose cool all right all right we got some stuff here some stuff about costume i might do one called costume in motion well that's cool i like that costume in motion costume design is a really cool topic and maybe the oldest concept art job aside from architecture that's the oldest concept art job things that are real designing things that are real um Simon says the wizard drawing when he was casting his spell, the clothes looked cool and animated. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So yeah, in motion. But just says that content is so silly. The old the old school stuff, like here's how to draw a realistic eye. And it's like <laughs> the Mark Crilly video from like a decade ago. And it's just like I remember I remember that design or that eye being like perfect when I was like 14. I was like, oh my gosh. Insane. <laughs> David Finch made us draw the skull. Yeah, skull drawing is good. It's good to know the skull. Um, yeah, people do struggle with discipline. Well, people don't know what discipline gives you access to, right? And people don't know what they want. So if you have no desire to do something, then discipline is unreasonable. It's an unreasonable ask. Um, because if it's like, oh, if uh, you, oh, you want to get better at drawing, then you need to do draw ten hours a day and do this and do that and blah 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 and do this and rah 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 and it's like. That's not going to work because the person like wants to get better at drawing. You know what I mean? It's not a real thought. It's not a real idea. It's a fake idea. Um, what's more accurate is that you want prowess. So in the moment, you're thinking about how do I attain prowess? Am I showing prowess? Am I showing skill? Am I showing capacity? Like what am I showing right now? You're, you're doing all of that while you're drawing. You're not drawing the thing that you're drawing. Um, so you got to really, really reprioritize your con. You got to reprioritize like what you're actually doing, man. Figure out what you're actually doing. It's hard to talk about. Okay. So maybe that is a good topic for a video because I need to script that out. <laughs> yeah drawing skull is good placement is good learning all that stuff is really important early on getting the proportion so that anytime you draw a head like you know how to block out like what's happening you know the brow like what's happening with the brow what's happening with the eye sockets the cheekbones you know being able to draw that from like any angles is really good to do able to do the little nosy bit yeah i think in these streams like it's hard to describe or to communicate like just how much how many drawings i've made in my lifetime like i'm 25 years old and i've been making drawings since i was like a child you know i've been drawing my dude Drawing, 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 drawing. And it's hard in a video to communicate like all that mileage, knowledge, time. Um, especially when your job is to kind of just like sort of scribble things out most of the time. Hard to communicate just how much you have to learn to be able to do things in a loose way that makes sense. <laughs> That's so funny. Glitching phones, man. Not fun. All right, so it's six for me now. I'm probably going to 
when did I start this? How long have I been going for? Let's see here. Let's see here. Whoa. Okay, we've been going for like an hour and 15. Damn. We've covered a lot, though, in this in this uh, brief discussion. We got to do a little bit more designing to actually put this into action. Um or I mean we've discovered we've discussed a lot here. I think that I put a lot of pressure on myself to like have something very concrete to show for like the conceptual learning because these streams are like half demo, half lecture, which I love, but this one's definitely more lecture than demo for sure. Um but yeah, and I'm also trying to maybe gear the titles of the streams to be a little bit more about the conversation. So like you know, so people passing by can be like, oh, I want to learn why airships are the perfect world building test. So let's consolidate that process, right? So specifically around airships. This is about the part of the stream where I start sitting cross-legged. I don't know why. I just do. I just like feel like it. Um, okay, so let's let's do this thing. So for the design process of something like this, something that we didn't know a whole lot about, you start with the research, right? How it works. Then after that, you need a why it's in your world. Because if you start with a why it's in your world before you know how it works, then you're going to end up with those designs that we were looking at earlier. Like you're going to end up with something that just does not make any sense at all. Um, so then you're going to go why it's in your world. And then obviously in the design phase, you're going to design it. Right. In the process of design, what you're going to be focusing on is like, uh, like, is it working in your world? That's like the check that you're giving yourself. Is it working in your world? Samman says the title of the stream about designing cats should be titled new meow 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 meow. <laughs> True. Oh man. After that, you're going to check and see if it is gelling. So I saw this great video recently where this, this person was talking about um, that in every zombie apocalypse movie or like any dystopian movie, like you will never see characters like riding a bicycle, even though a bicycle is the most common form of transportation. There are no bicycles in the walking dead. Zero. There are none, not one. So there's no bicycles in the walking dead. That's the most logical thing to do. You can not run a zombie on a bike, a mountain bike through the forest. Easy. These characters are like tired like walking down these miles and miles and miles, every single human in The Walking Dead would have a bicycle. Duh. That's like a duh. But the point the video made, which was very smart, was that you're not going to put Daryl on a bike. That's lame. You're not going to put him on a bike. Also, when you have bicycles, the world is just way less interesting because it's like so many problems are solved instantly, you know? Patricia's in the chat. Let's go, Patricia. Looking great. So cool. Welcome. <laughs> so funny. Great. Solo CSAS is also in the chat. I'm going to have to wash it later. It looks great. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, this this has been a lot of lecture for sure. A lot of back and forth. It's also extra cargo to carry around a bike. But the bike carries cargo. Like the bike is makes it easier. You're not carrying around the bike. The bike is carrying you. I don't mean to rag on The Walking Dead, but it's just funny. Um, I used to be obsessed with The Walking Dead. So good. Uh, 
Okay, so everything in this world is a fish, right? But yeah, so so let's let's go through the process of what I did for this project in particular because I followed this, right? Um, so we want to research how it works. So we know how airships work now. A little, right? Uh, then, why is it in our world? So for fish world, um, if anyone remembers, let's see. Let's go back to our Miro board, right? So this is just kind of a rough collection of a bunch of stuff I did for this fish world. But let's look at this scribble drawing of our of our city. This is on like a, a black rock island in the middle of the ocean. It's <laughs> funny, Hatch. Um, yeah, so in the middle of the ocean. So the idea of this world is that you can't actually bring ships to sea because they're giant creatures that will like hear, basically hear or, or know the ship is, is uh, sailing and it will come and it will destroy the ship. Right, so anything that tries to sail out of the tidal ring of this city will get destroyed. So they can't have ships. So that's why we have these fishing vessels, is they fly above the water and they catch fish. But you can only catch fish at night, um, and you can only attract fish to the surface with like this kind of bioluminescent glow, which is created by these uh, these sort of lure, the, the lure vessel, right? So this thing brings the fish to the surface and then the fishing vessel shoots out and, you know, kind of spots the schools of fish, shoots a net from the gun on the front, a little, little net gun, which is sick. Um, oh, Nab says, I low-key want to design a zombie riding a bike now. <laughs> That's funny. And Salmon says, with that by the creator of Invincible, maybe? I don't, I don't remember. And then Patricia says, there are always horses, but no bikes. So strange. <laughs> like the infrastructure that a horse needs is like, has a lot of infrastructure. Um, cool. So yeah, so this world, right, is like limited resource, limited space, limited whatever. So they have to send these ships out and come back, blah, blah, blah. Um, Cause the fishes are sleeping. That's funny. It's funny or grow. Yeah. So like, but then if, if this lure vessel stays out too long, too late into the night, like if they're like, oh, we need one more fish, one more whatever, it could draw up from the abyss, like a giant creature. And then you have potential for drama, right? So now we have like what's happening, like maybe we have like an upshot and the, the lure vessel is like, you know, got the ambient glow. And then we have the larger fishing ship like in, in the sky behind it or whatever, like higher up or something like that. And from the ocean and then out of the ocean this wow this like giant you know tentacled creature is like reaching up about to grab about to grab this ship right we're looking up at these ships it's reaching up into the sky wow right giant tentacled creature going to destroy the thing and maybe it's like f this ship is like fired flares to distract it the ship too trying to escape we can show like the smoke of like it's like rising up like trying to escape the ship but it's too late they were too they were too ambitious and now they're gonna get eaten right so now we have drama and like a sick keyframe idea maybe um just from that right let's return back so so now we have the why is it in the world and then is it working well, it's taken us a long time to figure out the ratios and stuff, but I feel like it is working. The only thing we got to update is this little this little guy here. We're just going to make the... We're going to just merge these, I think. Yeah. We're going to make this a little smaller in relation to the balloons because this is like metal designs. So it's more like that, right? Larger balloons. This will be hanging a little bit lower. Because these balloons have to carry both the ship and also its cargo, which is all these fish. Um, Samman says, sleeping with the fishes is a way more intimidating threat in that world. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's exactly right. Um, that's exactly right. <laughs> cool 
my girlfriend remarked that the whole gang is here, which is true. The whole gang is here. I mean, you guys are awesome. Like, great questions. Keep me on my toes, you know, asking very relevant questions. It's really, really wonderful engaging and doing these streams with such a wonderful audience. Like, this is really, really lovely. It's really fun. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited, man. And I'm excited to produce some videos with you guys in consideration. Some, like, longer, like, more concise videos. Like, just a 15-minute banger on, like, costume design in motion, you know? Because a great example of that is when you're designing a costume, you have to think about what is going to happen when it's in motion, right? Uh, also, Willow says, for this world, if this group of people uh, base everything off of fish, are there other group of people base their society off other sea creatures? Ooh, what was the inciting incident for it to be fish? Well, I can tell you that story. So for Fish World, what's cool about Fish World is, um, let's zoom out, because we have some of the materials here, but not, not everything to discuss Fish World. But uh, essentially, it started with this design of this guy. Because I was designing a hat. It was like a random hat, and someone in voice chat on Discord was like, oh, it looks kind of like a fish. And I was like, oh, okay. So I made it into a fish hat shaped like a fish and it holds fish and then i was like oh okay and so this is called um uh i think it's called found world building where you're finding it as you're designing right so you're like starting with something specific and then extrapolating out from that and that's what all of this how all of this happened so i can show you how everything happened um so i was like uh you know, the garb of the nobility. You just write that down. All of a sudden you're thinking like, oh my gosh, like now this guy's a nobleman. Well, what is a nobleman in this world? Like what, what, what happens in this world? Um, Ogro says, you're such a cool guy. Just keep going. I really want to see the things you're doing and we'll do. Oh, dude, thank you so much. Hell yeah. Um, sick. <laughs> oh man. So... Okay, cool. And like they use scales for currency, maybe. I don't know. So yeah, we got this guy, fish, fish world nobility guy, right? He's standing. He's got fish on his hat because fish are very valuable. And if you have fish on your hat and you wear them, it's like almost like the aroma and the stench. And like that's almost like, like showing nobility, right? It's like showing your status that you're able to display these fine fish on your, on your hat. You know, and these people who are following him are his servants and, uh, they have little sardine cans on their head so when they're serving like when they're you know like their master just bids them to come and they like kneel down and they like eat from their head it's almost like eating from their brain it's like kind of weird but it's kind of cool because they're like little sardine can things right so there's like cannery and all that stuff so that this implies that there are canneries and designs and this it, it implies a lot this world is going to feel very deco right um very actually more nouveau than deco it's going to feel very nouveau Such a fishy dude. Not Gabriel, of course. <laughs> That's funny. Neld. Hell yeah. Welcome to the chat. Um so let's keep let's keep discovering here. Yeah, so this this basically uh implies a lot. And then I kind of had the shoulders and neck bare, and that got me thinking, like, why would this area be exposed? Um, in this costume. Like, why would this be happening? Because he's covered up. And I was like, okay. And I just drew it that way. I didn't, I didn't think of a reason. I was like, okay, well, why would that be? It's like, oh, well, actually, it's to show that they're, like, untouched by this kind of, like, illness. So, like, what's the illness? It's like, okay, well, maybe the illness is that when you eat raw fish, you have this, like, euphoric feeling because the fish eat this, you know, creature in the ocean or they eat this substance or form of plankton that gives you euphoric hallucinations when you eat it raw. So, sushimi is, like, is like a, basically, like, a like a, not a narcotic, what's the word? Not a, well, yeah, a hallucinogen in some ways, right? So sashimi becomes this thing where it's like anybody can eat it, but it's super taboo too, except the wealthy do it, but, you know, they don't like tell anyone or they keep it kind of on the low and stuff. And and it's sort of like uh, if you were part of the nobility, you stay totally covered up. Um, and it's like, uh, if you imply that they have the illness or they have anything, it's like for them, it's like they have it covered because they don't even need to prove anything, but their servants do. Right. So their servants need to prove they don't have the mark of this, of this, uh, scaly affliction that happens when you eat this raw fish too much. Right. It's like once in a while, nothing's going to happen, but you start eating it a little too much and all this other stuff. So then I'm thinking like, okay, well then 
what's what happens here like it's taboo it's bad so then it's like okay so if you get the fish scale illness that's bad um so then what happens well you get hunted down because they don't want degenerate fish people in the street right boom so we have they're carried away by these guards who are these guards they're people who are hired they wear these masks and these masks are going to trigger this like ancient memory that has been implanted in these people's minds by eating this raw fish too much when they see these guards it like triggers like almost like the call of cthulhu for them and they're like wow you know and so when they when they are afraid of these guards then um the guards know to like intimidate them and come for them and stuff right but it doesn't affect the rich people because they have uh like drugs and stuff to get rid of it like subdue them and everything it's like a whole thing eventually i have to design the doctor that surgically removes all of the scales and everything from the rich people because it's like uh it's going to be like a very specific job and like they get invited to all the parties and everyone knows that everyone has hired this person but no one says it it's like a very like under the it's like a whole thing right um but yeah, you get taken by the guards, you get chained up, hauled through the streets, it's very humiliating, and then you get dried out, right? So they string you up in this, like, uh, in the public square, and they make sure nobody can touch you, nobody comes to you, any loved ones who comes, they're not allowed to touch you, and they wait for all the scales to fall off. Like, that's what happens, right? But it's like a torturous affair, it's like a really bad affair, and you're, like, permanently pretty damaged for, like, forever. It's, like, not the proper treatment, right? But it's supposed to be this thing. And then everybody knows. All this other stuff. So it's a, a humiliation tactic. So it's like, all right. So this this already has implications. That there's there's industry. There's worlds. There's status. There's guards. There's all this stuff. So it's like, all right. Consumables, man. What gets made in this world? Well, let's think here, right? Boom. We have all this stuff that is able to be made and be created or whatever. And keep in mind, this all started with a hat, Literally, this hat was the first thing I did. And now we're designing... Uh, God, I hate whip panning so much. I, I, whoever decided whip panning was a good idea... Not good. Boom. Now we have all these consumables. We have this beautiful kelp beverage or something. And we have a sea snake oil, the fish oil ambrosia. This stuff, you put a drop of this in anything, and you will see, like... You will see... Uh, like, uh, the future, man. Like, this thing will show you things you can never forget. Very euphoric substance. Very popular at parties of the nobility. A, a bottle of this fish oil ambrosia, right? And this is extraordinarily expensive. This is going to be, like, this is going to be, like, uh, twice as much as, like, anyone makes through the uh, for, like, the entirety of their life in this world. Very expensive. Squid ink oil. We got a fish decanter. Not a fish. A, a crab claw decanter. Algae bottle of something. An octopus in a jar. Uh, fish eyes. We got some, <laughs> it's a word joke, um, a little octopus beverage, maybe a kelp is help perfume, you know, it's classic. And we've got crab claw uh, drink, which is going to make you strong. I don't know, maybe, but who's drinking it? Cra oh my God, whip panning. I swear to God. Crab guy, he's drinking it. And when you defeat him, if this is a game, you get crab beverage. Boom game design we're talking about it crab guy drinks it where does crab guy live under the city who else lives under the city all these people right this woman with a bird skull who spear fishes this woman underneath who fishes in the in the, the the reef or whatever she fishes down there it's like super taboo like you're not supposed to reef or you, you're you shouldn't be able to but people who live under the city have to so there's people who live under the city in the city and above the city three categories of people, right? Three worlds that you can traverse. Again, if this is a game, we also have helmets, obviously. But who is flying? Oh yeah, so then how do they get the fish? They get the fish with these aircrafts. Um, but then why aircrafts? Well, because you can't go in the water. Why can't you go in the water? Giant creatures, blah, 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 all of this stuff. Who's flying the aircrafts? These guys, the pilots. These dudes who are wrangling the nets, these guys who are spotting the fish, and these guys who are flying the ship. And it's arranged so that the ship, the, the fish wrangler, the net wrangler guys are down here. The area of uh, most exposure um the the uh spotter who's manning the giant crossbow that shoots the nets and the pilot who's up here flying the aircraft right and then we've got other fish things so like a giant transport so maybe this thing travels from continent to continent right and selling the wares of fish world and maybe it's like a merchant sh merchant ship or like a ship for the nobility to travel on like we don't know Small transport, just for kind of flying around. And we got the lure vessel, which we discussed earlier. And that draws fish to the surface. 
Uh, we also have the weapons of the of the guard or the nobility. So like if your industry is eel skin and that's what your family is in charge of, then you have the eel blade, obviously, or the fish blade or the whatever blade, different thematic things, right? And then let's say you have different industries for these no noble families. You would use different materials for their headdresses to show their status. So we've got this guy who owns the metalwork. He's the, obviously the wealthiest because, you know, everything's made of metal in this world. We have the person who kind of like is more in the foraging thing. So they make things out of like wicker and all this other kind of natural materials, but she's still very wealthy. We have this guy who's in charge of God knows whatever. I don't know. And we have the kind of salvagey guy who, who turns everything into other stuff. He's a bit of a taboo guy. No one really likes having him around, but he's a powerful person because like someone's got to do something with all the fish bones and all the guts and the this and the that. And he does a lot of cool stuff with it. Um, so yeah, we have like a lot of these different people, but boom, baby. That's a lot of what we did for fish world. This isn't even all of it, but this is a lot of it. So like starting with a hat, boom, that, uh, and then working your way out. So start when you're, when you're world building, start with something hyper specific and then zoom out from there. Cool. Damn. I just took you through the design sequence for all the fish world stuff. That was really fun. Um, but yeah, back to the ships. Okay, I'm going to be live for probably another 20 minutes. So any burning questions anyone has, feel free to ask them for sure. Cool. Let's read the chat. Let's go, crab guy fight. Let's go. Vucky ABX says hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Samman says hello to that person. Mojo says when world building, start with a hat. Yeah, literally start with a hat. Um, Moth Moth says just wanted to say hello. Got here a little while ago and your ideas are so fascinating and can't wait to see more. I shall be lurking in chat. Oh, awesome. Welcome, Moth Moth. And Jelani says, I love your stuff. Are you going to be doing the art station challenge? Uh, yeah, why not? I'll do it. I'll do the art station challenge. I'll do that. That'll be my next stream. So on Thursday, I will stream designing for the art station challenge. Um, the idea, the theme is Neo Tokyo because of course it is. My God. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do if art station ever comes out with like a good idea for a challenge. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't have to worry about that now, though, because we have Neo Tokyo, baby. Good, good God, who's coming up with this stuff? <laughs> uh, I'm like half joking. Yeah, it's it's an okay brief. I mean, people are gonna do it. That's the thing, right? Is that I think ArtStation realized that uh, people don't want to do it if there's no prizes, so they might as well make it something that everybody wants to do. So, this challenge will be like Weeb Army. Gonna have to compete against all the weebs. Epic. They don't. They don't want to see Fish World in Neo Tokyo. That's for sure. They don't want. They don't want to see these Fish World ideas. <laughs> oh man. Cool. So we want to do these cool kind of like. Uh... So one thing that's really sick about the Nouveau era of design, the the Gilded Age, you know, in Europe, is that like everything, even mechanical, had like this air of just beauty and like inlay and design, and we really want to show that across all facets of this world. So even something like a connecting joint has to have like an air of like beauty, right? Everything in this world, every inch is decorated. Everything has a purpose. Everything is like relating back to these like fish ideas and stuff, you know. So this fishing vessel, it's going to be really cool, I think. Um, Mojo said, dude, make a Neo Tokyo fish world for them. I might. Um, Samman says, how do they go fish? Do they pray before fishing? Are the fishers some sort of class, like, like the military? Actually, a little bit. So, like, the fishermen and these fishing people, they're, like, a pretty hardened crew because fishing is super dangerous, and there's only a few ships that go out and do it. So each ship, like, has their own vibe, and it's, like, very hard to get into their crew. Um, 
they usually only have one trainee at a time and like it takes a long time for any of them to retire and stuff. And so it's like, it's pretty hard guys, man, who are like going out there and fishing in the very dangerous ocean. And once in a while, a fishing ship will get eaten by a giant creature. So it's like very dangerous. Like you roll the dice for sure. Sandman says art station did what they, they do, do, do. They do a challenge. So, wah. Gotta chill. I talk so fast. So, Art Station did. They're doing another challenge. They do a challenge every year, um, and uh, or twice a year. I don't know, but this year the theme is Neo Tokyo. The last theme was medieval back and forth, and it was maybe one of the worst written briefs I have ever read. Ever. It basically just explained itself. And it gave you the only ideas you could possibly do because the scope was so limited and unsuccessful, in my opinion. It was not a good challenge at all. Um, Mojo says, are you coming up with these ideas on the spot or have you been building on it for a while? Well, the thing I said about the fisherman was just on the spot. Like loose, there maybe a couple things I knew before, but it's like when... <laughs> Bucky ABX says, I'm assuming I missed the title explanation. Oh man, yeah. Well I'll touch on it again. Um if you if you want, I'll do one more run through. So but um yeah, so if your ideas are solid and your the rules of your world are solid and you are versed in narrative and you kind of know what you're doing in that arena, then actually it's not gonna be super hard for you to come up with ideas on the spot because it's like it it's more of like an oh duh. It's like duh. And you kind of want that reaction to be like, oh, well, duh, it's this. Like, of course, of course, these fishermen are kind of a pseudo-military. It's a really hard job. And because this, because of that, like, you want it to be like an of course answer. Um, and that's basically what I teach in, like, the mentorship that I'm building is, like, uh, getting you to a point where no matter what idea is thrown at you, you can build a premise and begin that process of like being able to extrapolate out with like the kind of these like, oh, oh yeah, well, of course this, of course that, you know? Um, of course there's a, there's a ship based on a angler fish. Of course there is. Duh. There has to be, you know? So <laughs> that's kind of what we're doing. Um, already, already right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll run through the idea initially. So for those of you who are just just joining and for people in the VOD as well who are watching this back, like just another clarification. So we started with the idea or we wanted to ask the question of like why airships are the perfect test for your world building skills. And we went through a lot of examples of like, you know, poor, poor design when it comes to airships. We talked through how airships actually work, like the science of how airships work. And we figured out that any airship you really design in a fantasy context, it's not necessarily going to be adhering to reality but that's okay so because world building is essentially oh mojo says i have such a hard time with storytelling and world building well buddy this is the stream for you <laughs> this is all we talk about here man um so yeah so so yeah so the idea of world building is you want to be able to set rules and uh, have things be grounded in a reality. It doesn't necessarily have to be our reality, but a reality, the reality that you're pitching, and that reality has restrictions and rules. So when you're adding an element into a world-building context, you have to look at how it works, the thing that you're doing, whether it's a train or a guy or a weapon or a, a legend or whatever you're adding in, how it works, how does it work. Then you're going into why it's in your world. Because you can only do that after you know how it works. Otherwise, you're you're pitching why something should be there when you don't even know what it is or what it does or how it works. Um, the second thing is in the design process, you design it and then you ask, is it working? And then if it's not working, you go back to how it works, why is it in your world, blah, 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 blah. And maybe you ax it there. Maybe it's not a good idea. And this can be a very fast process. It doesn't have to be a long, arduous process. And the last thing you do is check that it fits with everything else. So you want it to be cohesive, right? Coherent. You want things to gel. So that's also going to help you design. Once you have one highly specific thing, you're going to be able to design, design out from that, right? Because just like we showed in the prompt, if you start with a fish hat, you can create a whole world out of that. You can create a whole world from a fish hat. And that's what we've proven here. 
So that's my, yeah, that's my pitch for me to get hired at Riot. <laughs> give me a hat, I'll give you a world. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so why are airships the perfect test for your world building skills? Well, you're going to test this process, right? Because airships are hard. Figuring out how they work is hard. Because you're going to be faced with a lot of uncomfortable truths in reality if you really, if you really, really design. Um, or if you really understand something, you're going to realize like, ooh, my romanticized idea wasn't true. So then you want to, or what you have the opportunity to do with airships is to kind of go like, okay, well, do I abuse or, and do I use people's ignorance on the subject of airships to sell my design? as something that's not realistic because when we looked at airship designs none of them were realistic at all so it was like uh nothing would fly ever and yet people believe them or yet people like them or whatever people like airships so it's kind of like finding the balance for you of giving the feeling that it's working and we talked about you know ratio proportion all that stuff so a ship a giant ship like this and the scale of this ship is huge right so the scale of the ship is like this in relation to this giant ship is like this and this would be manned by like three people, you know? So this is a giant ship, giant airship, huge. Um, so like uh, to make that work, which we have the, this is unrelated, sorry. <laughs> when we have the, um, the giant ship here, right? Let me get rid of the page layout frame. Um, when we have this giant ship here, how do we sell that it flies? Obviously, based off of what we know about hydrogen and everything like that, like this doesn't, um, this doesn't, uh, what am I looking for? This would not lift this amount of metal and this amount of material, but the balloon is around the size that we would believe it. Like we, we would believe it. If we saw this in like a game or a world or whatever, we would believe it. If this thing took off, we'd be like, oh sick, hell yeah, like let's go. The other option is actually thinning out all the edges to make sure this is all very thin metal. People know it's very thin metal. That's the other thing to do is to not have your edges be super thick for because that implies weight. Everything matters. Every single thing matters. So especially when designing an airship, everything mat matters. How heavy is it? What materials are you implying? Is it like a metal framed ship or a cloth framed ship? This one's cloth, obviously, because, you know, we have patchwork, all this stuff. Cloth canvas, metal rig and all that stuff. Even, even adding an element of a... Uh, thinning things out just, just a little bit let's see what it does let's make a new layer see what it does so even thinning that stuff out this edge really making sure it's thin like razor thin right barely has an edge to it already that feels lighter right so everything matters these giant engines, make sure you know that this thing can move. This thing's moving, man. This is a big engine, a lot of smoke. It's consuming a lot of material to keep this thing moving, right? That is implied by these designs. Like, you want it to feel like it's, you know, like really going. Um, so then returning back to the kind of graph we were working on before with the fish planes is that you research how it works, explain why it's in your world, see if the design is working and then check that it fits with everything else. So it's like f to do an airship, you need knowledge of engineering, physics. You need to be able to research to even understand all of that or know where to look for all of that. Then you got to actually make it fit aesthetically in your world. Think about materials, think about whatever, think about who flies it, why it's flying, why do they have a flying airship? And then, you know, you kind of go back to like your world or whatever, but to justify an airship in a world, you better have a reason. So that is in what, why, that's why, in my opinion, it's an excellent prop to start with for world building or, or to give yourself a challenge, right? There are other things as well. Like, because if you give yourself like a sword, if you want to world build out from a sword, like, come on, man, you know? Well, that's also another thing because I designed a whole character based off a sword and I'll, I'll show you. I will show you because this method, doing it with an airship, allows you to do with everything else because an airship is such a specific thing, man. Did I call it? Yeah, okay, sick. Let's open up this PSD, baby, baby. So, I don't know if you guys know what a spadone is, 
but a spadone is a Italian sword, almost as a Y-hander, but not actually. It's a very thin sword, very light sword, but it's like long, very long. So I wanted to design a character based off of a spadone, right? So I started with this really rough sketch of a guy in that era, like 16th century Italy in Europe, you know, they're like, not quite guns yet, you know, not quite, you know, this stuff. People are still using swords. People are in full armor and stuff. And I've got this guy here, you know, and uh, he's got this spadone. So I'm like, all right, well, what is the purpose of a spadone of a sword? A spadone is not actually meant to, like, kill anyone in a duel. It's actually meant to threaten the most people possible as you spin it in combination and, uh, like defend yourself from people. It's the idea is that you occupy the attention of like five people at once with a spadone. So it, it's an equalizer in terms of threat because you can still stab a guy or cut a guy, but you have a lot of reach, right? But it's not necessarily going to give you a crazy amount of advantage, you know, in other areas or whatever, but you can threaten multiple people with it. So I'm like, okay, so let's design this guy, right? Started with this drawing and then I was like, okay, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll change this guy or do something else with this guy. Maybe give him a buckler. And I was like, ah, that's lame. So I then thought to myself, okay, let me do a guy that is kind of like a sort of a smiley guy. He's got a mustache. He's got this long sword and he's, he's well-dressed. So this, this guy is like a, a renowned, well-known dude who uh, is like very good at what he does. So he's like a, a bodyguard or like a, a very well-known guy and his squire, his nephew follows him around. So he's almost like a knight squire relationship. This like renowned uh, defender person who, you know, gets hired by these wealthy people to, go across and like, you know, escort their, their, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, b -b 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 convoy, like escort their convoy and everything. And he's a well-known guy. People don't want to mess with this guy. Um, you know, and I'm continuing to design. So then I, I keep pushing it and I'm like, ah, maybe he's like a carefree guy. And maybe the scabbard is on, you know, his, his nephew, his nephew, Thomas. And, Maybe, maybe when he unsheathes the sword, Thomas hits the ground. Like, that's funny, right? <laughs> and he's, like, turtled and he can't get up. So now there's, like, a relationship, right? So if you're thinking of this from a video game concept, maybe these characters are in your party and you have to choose them as a duo. And if you want this guy to draw a sword, you sacrifice a turn for Thomas. Like, there's an idea, right? But then the next turn, you get, like, a bonus and you can do something cool. So it's, like, a setup. So we've designed a character. We've designed a relationship. And we've now added that to a, a potential game pitch, maybe something like Banner Saga or something, right? Um, so also, if this was an animation, then that would be a great moment of great comedy moment, right? He's like, Thomas, you know, the, my sword. And he pulls it out and the kid falls over and he's like, don't worry, Thomas, blah, 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 blah. blah. And Thomas just like can't get up. It's like, it's like, there's, there's potential here, right? What else did I do here? What else did I do? What else did I do? Oh, yeah. So then I'm like, okay, well, let's put these guys in context, right? So we have these two guys. We got worried Thomas. We've got the carefree uncle. They have their thing, their relationship. We drew Thomas. You know, he's a little timid guy. And we drew the uncle, right? He's a little bit, a little bit, uh, maybe he's like a little, a little inebriated a lot of the time. So then we have Thomas who's reading the scroll, right? He's reading like maybe the bounties or something or like he's reading an ad or he's like figuring out where they're supposed to go because he doesn't worry about anything. Thomas does everything. Now we've discovered something through this design is that Thomas does everything. He makes sure that his uncle stays out of trouble. He makes sure that he's sober. He wakes him up in the morning. He, you know, pours the water on him and, you know, all of that stuff. He makes sure that, that Uncle Lawrence, which we've given him a name now, he makes sure that he shows up for the gigs and does the stuff or whatever. So people know that's a legendary guy, but they don't know that Thomas is like, you know, the person holding everything together, right? Who carries everything and is all this other stuff, right? So then we continued on. We did a, we did, a, I think, a color pass. Where's the color? Where's the, yeah, so we did a color rough, right, for these guys. The idea here is that we wanted primary colors. Primary colors imply like a lawful good you know primary colors when in combination are like it's orderly civilized oh we tried to paint him and he looks terrible yeah so we did not keep that there we go yeah so that's the final but let's let's keep it rough so so yeah we have these characters we sketched them in we gave them you know whites of the eyes and blah blah blah, blah. we put them in um andrew larkin welcome welcome 
Um, we're just going over to design. And this is all from a sword, right? So this guy doesn't actually kill anyone. He just like is a great performer, essentially. And he distracts a bunch of people and he does a bunch of movements. Because if you see the spedone like techniques, it's like very beautiful how they spin around. Um, and then we push it to a final. And the, in the final, we have Uncle Lawrence, this Leonin man with this great, beautiful sword, right? And his little, his little uh, what's it called? Um, his little messer on his sidearm, his little sidearm messer, right? So he knows how to fight, but he doesn't really kill anyone. He lets his reputation do the talking, right? Um, and uh, But when he does fight, he takes care of business, right? He's got this very elaborate costume, very well dressed. You know, we got the blue, we got the primary colors, and we have these mo these shared motifs, so uniform motifs. So he's got these like kind of leafy patterns on his shoes, his slippers, and so does Thomas on his thing. So they're tied together by uniform. Um, exactly. So Ash says, uh, "I love how clear the dynamic is when they're next to each other." So here's a great thing about character design, and this is something to for everyone who wants to be a character designer. A character is defined by who is standing next to them. That's like a huge thing, man. Like it's like a huge, huge thing, right? Because you can have like a children's book or like a children's TV show villain, and they're like the big bad, right? When they're next to the kid villain, but then you put that next to like a design of Sauron, and all of a sudden they're like comedy relief. Because they they don't because in contrast right so that's something very important to think about and when you're thinking about designing characters duos man duos are the strongest characters they play off of each other and they're able to be characters next to each other doing a loner guy with a sword like that's not a character because think about it like in any anime you watch there's always the character the main character is playing off of there's always everyone around blah 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 and there's oftentimes these duos right. But a strong duo character is a very, very powerful character archetype. So we have the two characters. Thomas is shrouded in shadow. He's kind of looking down a lot. He's kind of very afraid. And then, you know, uh, Uncle Lawrence is very, very much bathed in light all the time, you know, looking around and all that stuff. Even here, you can see he's in shadow, right? He's got a hood, too, that he puts on and stuff. It's like nervous, nervous kid. And we still have that drawing in that relationship down here of where we started. Because that, it's like, you know, uh, his success at his expense. That's the dynamic, right? And any kid with this kind of parent dynamic knows exactly what this feels like. So, you know, this is a real thing, man. You know, it's a real thing. And uh, this is very cathartic for me doing this design, for sure. So this is cool. But yeah, so then you can design a character off of a sword, but you're going to have to do a lot of the work yourself too, right? <laughs> Nelt says Uncle Lawrence equals origin story Sauron. That's so funny. Siren versus Lego Batman. <laughs> Dude, let's go. It's funny, Colin. Um... <laughs> Jules M said, which also welcome to the stream. Jules M says, uh, uh, he also lets his shoes do the talking too. Looks fresh to death. <laughs> exactly, right? It's like, you know, this, this, very very uh you know he's peacocking right but in in that way um sam N says anyone next to saron will look funny well there you go Sar saron is an archetype right um oh dude batman saron's follower that's a sick character design wait dude we should design that batman subtitle saron's follower dude that's kind of sick that would look so badass. That would be really cool. That'd be excellent. But yeah, so this is an example of designing a character based off of a... Uh... Oh, wait. I think I have my research pages for a... Uh... Oh, yeah. I was... I was. This was during a mentorship I was working on. I was doing with this uh, this young person who... We were, we were taking his airship designs and, like, making them more functional and, like, redrawing them and, like, coming up with new ideas. Coming up with different ideas, right, for, for different airships and stuff and different planes, flying machines. Because that was the brief. It was, like, flying machines. These are just sketches. Uh, that's a fun throwback. But, yeah, so, so there you go, man. From a sword to a very successful, in my opinion, character duo. It's awesome. It's based. It's sick. We love it. Cool. So going back, we're going back to fish, fish world, fish vessel. 
are also coming on time. So let's close out the stream, man. So uh, we didn't do a whole lot of designing live. We did a lot of talking, but it was pretty fun, though. Yeah, Neld says, would that be just a Nazgul Batman? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Witch King Batman. Um, Colin says, one does not simply follow Sauron. <laughs> Man, throwback to the good old days of memes. Good Lord. So cool. So cool. Well, let's just do a fun scribble drawing. Last thing we'll do. So knowing what we know now, let's let's think about, you know, if we were to design another ship for Fish World, right? Let's say that this nation was actually like a military, like warring nation, kind of. And they liked to capture other ships. So let's do, based on what we know, let's do an epic design. Let's do a giant, a giant ship, huge ship. So it's got one balloon two balloons and then one on the other side three balloons right three giant balloons and this one we have the bridge up here so it's like a little gondola at the front you know and it grants like forward vision and maybe we do like another kind of cell of guys here another one in the back you know blah blah blah, blah. and we have like engines going across on like the side and like, you know, maybe we can do like a couple on the top too. This thing's moving, right? Many, many engines on this ship. One here, one here, and you know, one here as well. Like a whole row of engines going, wah, pushing this thing along. So yeah, we like that, we like that. It's pushing close to the third. So we want things to be divided in thirds. Thirds is really good. We like that. We can talk about that another time maybe. Giant ship, right? Ba -ba -ba, ba -bum -bum. And let's say that this one's actually very like shark-esque in its aesthetic, right? So let's say decoratively, we have a distinction of like cloth or color or something on the top. And then this is maybe like white or like red or like something distinct. And then let's do a, the maw. So we're going to wireframe it because remember it has to be light. We're going to wireframe this and we could have the decorative like teeth here for, for decoration. Right. And we have this here to cap, to catch, to catch the ship. So the idea, and this is again, wireframe. So this isn't actually thick. Like this is supposed to like grab. Right. And when this thing lowers and opens, oh, because it opens and closes when it opens, then this thing is like becomes like a net. It's like wire netting. Remember, we're just scribbling this out. We're just designing based off what we like. Okay. Now that we have these shapes, we want it to be. Uh, Oh, dude, see you later, Neld. Oh, dude, heck yeah. Would love to world build with you sometime, man. That'd be sick. Sick. Oh yeah, it's it's a uh, harm on YouTube. So I know I know him as Neld because uh we moderate on the Lightbox Discord channel together. But Neld is one of the community leaders, community managers. Nell's a cool guy, or Harm, cool guy. Very cool guy. We're trying to set up a time where we could play some uh, some Magic the Gathering online together. Trying to suss that out. Okay, so shape-wise, <laughs> I agree, cool guy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so shape-wise, this is actually sort of uh not super working right because the head feels too big so this is what we're going to do we're going to do a mirror design so we're going to say that these we have a representation of an eye aesthetic representation of an eye right for the shark but actually what we're going to do is we're going to shrink all this down and we're going to mirror it it's going to be like a goblin shark-esque thing i think it's going to be kind of cool 
but we're going to do a smaller kind of chassis. Or, or, oh, we're going to do this. Wait, it's like a, it's like a gaping eel thing. Wait, that's sick. Okay, so it flies down. And its jaw opens into this, like, giant, like, thing, right? So this stays up most of the time, stays up like this. We'll do a, we'll do a side by side. Dude, heck yes. You can even do a cool aesthetic thing where like the, the tail like wraps around the end. That becomes like the, because it's an eel, right? Becomes like the back fin or something. I don't actually know. I got to look up the anatomy after this to understand it better. But you can do like a cool thing like that. These are propellers. Okay, so this obviously is going to take some refinement. I think actually we can disconnect it and it would be just as cool too. And we can pull this down. It's fully vertical. Dude, oh, and then the ship that's trying to escape. He's like, no, let me go. Oh, wait, this is so cool. Look at this. Heck yeah. So we have a net, net gaping eel concept disconnected slightly from the thing boom 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 wow all right there we go so so yeah so cockpit is here <laughs> Andrew Logan says, hell yes. Yes, dude. Exactly. Hell yes. This epic ship. Boom. And then when it captures it, they like take it back to their their world, right? So let's do another uh draw or let's let's uh, just copy this over. Um and we are going to show just the basic silhouette of like what it looks like when the when it's closed. So it's like pretty innocuous. So it's like just like flying and then this thing opens and the whole net goes shung, hung, and it hangs. Shunk. So this is like a big shunk motion. And you can like hear the metal go like, hung, you know, hung. and then when it captures it, the mouth goes back up, shunk, closes, sealing it in. So it's like wrapped up almost like a little cocoon in, the, in his stomach. Steel wire, the whole show. Oh dude, yes, this is sick. Okay, again, going back to our rules. We've added a lot of elements here. So we want to make this a little more in the world of believability. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to increase the size, man. Size of the balloon. Whomp. We want it to feel like it can fly. So we're going to make it big. All right, guys, that's a demo, right? So what did we learn from this? Or like, what did we kind of get from this? So we thought to ourselves, okay, how does it work? Well, we know how airships work. Right. And engineering wise, we know how this would work. This thing would open up. It would have a net that extends out. You know, it would be attached to the thing. It's got propellers to move, blah, blah, blah. blah. We know all this stuff. Right. Um, so then we could also do like another fin thing here if we wanted to. But. Uh, but yeah, so. Why is it in our world? We know how it works. Why is it in our world? Because they need to capture other ships. They need to cap. There's some some reason some things need to capture some people. Right. So um, then we go back and we check, is it working? Well, we just made an edit, right? To see if it's working. Um, and I think it is working personally. So let's copy it. And then the last check was, does it fit with everything else? And let's see. Let's see if it fits with everything else. Let's do a check. I think these fit in the same world. Personally, I think these could easily fit in the same world. Yeah, 
for sure. For sure. This was like this big in comparison. Trying to escape. Yes, that works. This works. Successful design, I would say. Successful sketch. We got to resolve it for it to be a successful design. Um, but boom, there you go. Done. Idea, right? So then maybe I would block in some loose values, maybe or whatever, but then I'd pass this to a client with a sheet of like 20 other ideas like it or, or whatever, right? So that's the idea is that it shouldn't be our world building and designing in this thing is like, it shouldn't be this arduous, intense process. It's like train hard, train your creative mind and your drawing skills and your capacity to understand and continue to learn all the time so that when you're faced with challenges like these design challenges, that it feels like one one problem leads to a solution, leads to a solution, leads to a solution, and it's all rooted in story. Okay. Potato Salad says, which first of all, welcome Potato Salad to the stream, welcome. I'm designing characters for the first time for a world I wanna build and the sketching phase is rough. Seeing you do it live is insane. Okay, sick. Well, I'm glad it's helpful, right? Um, we did some other character design stuff live too in the past VODs or whatever. Um, Mojo says, this goes dummy hard. <laughs> HG asks it, or says, it's cool to see you come up with these ideas and get excited over them on stream. Ah, oh, dude, hell yeah. Well, if you're not getting excited over the idea, it's like, come on. Oh, also new idea. I just came up with it. So for this drawing, I feel like a better shape instead of like would be that the eel's body like curves uh, curves like under then like curves back over or something like a cool cool curvy shape here swing swing to help add like threat swing 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 could even do it like over the over this this edge and then like back back over and around you could do something cool like you want to make the momentum feel cool as it flies um heck yeah and then Solo says, how are you training these days? That's a great question. How am I training these days? Um, I've just been doing this a lot. Uh, studies help too. Honestly, one of the best things that I've been doing has been um, the one hour character design challenge. That's been really good. Uh, so it keeps you on your toes. So I'll do painting studies and I'll just keep training my painting, keep training my stuff and blah, blah, blah. But uh but I wanna be doing more design challenges. So let me pull up the Patreon Discord here. Um, so we do challenge, we do character designs in one hour, right? And the most recent one that we did last night, it was impromptu, it was very you know spontaneous, was a biscuit soldier. So Colin did this epic design here, which is so cool. Um, and then, uh, because like, you know, he protects the biscuits, he protects the materials, he is a soldier of the biscuit world. And my take was entirely different. I decided to look at a biscuit tin and like make a design. So like if a, if a rat civilization made uh, like beautiful armor out of a biscuit tin and that would be like, like a, like a biscuit soldier, you know? So it's like taking those prompts, doing something unique, doing something novel, again, focusing on story and the discord anyone can join the patreon discord. It's three bucks a month. It's in the description. If you want to join it's, we're still setting it up. Um, but yeah, and we'll be having these kind of discussions in the voice chat there a lot too. Um, Moth Moth says, what are some ways you would suggest to train and enhance creativity? Yeah, you can do the one hour challenge if you want just by yourself. Um, another thing to do is honestly, I watch a lot of like script breakdown videos for a film. I do a lot of story breakdowns, like all that stuff. Like I love video essays. And uh, honestly, like genuinely studying like artists that you love, like really like learning everything about them, like their biography, who they were, why they did what they did, their pitfalls, their character errors, like learning about artists is good to do. Um, but cre training creativity, you just got to do it a lot, man. Like do it a lot, like design a lot, create a lot. Um, it's like comics, man. It's like, learning how to draw, learning how to make comics. Like you have to make a lot of comics to figure out like what's good, what's bad, what's successful, what's not. There's a lot of theory to learn, but it's also just like a lot of, it's just you, you know? 
but yeah, so this is cool. And this required some knowledge of biology. So whatever you're basing your world off of, know that stuff. So if you if you are basing things off of animals, like giant designs of ships based off of animals, know what those animals are. Like this gaping eel. Like know what a gaping eel is. Know what a shark is. Know what a lure fish is. Because like even the lure vessel, even how it's connected, this is connected. The, the gondola is connected to the balloon. Um... And the way that male anglerfish will fuse to the females. They will literally fuse to their bodies. And I was like, all right, let's do like a cool nouveau version of this design. Let's like make it sick. So it's like understanding the subject matter of what you're doing. Cool. Um, but yeah, I'll discuss training creativity more when talking about training creativity in the context of uh, what we do in the industry for concept art, visual development, story art, character design, all that stuff. Like when talking about that stuff, man, you really gotta, there's, dude, there's a lot, man. Cause it's like, there's so many things and they all assist each other, but it's like really difficult to consolidate actionable things. Cause it's such a hard job. And it's like, not only do you have to know like a ton of theory and know how to design well, but it's like, you gotta be able to actually draw, which is really hard. So like, that's the hardest, one of the hardest parts. But then you get people who can actually draw and they don't know the first thing about design. Um, so, man. And also, this is just like real stuff. If you, if you, if you don't want to be replaced with AI, it's got to go beyond pretty pictures, man. It's got to, it's got to go beyond pretty pictures. It's got to be, it's really got to be uh, ideas, story, you know? The connections you can make. Just a little side note there. But yeah, this was a fun stream, guys. We talked about airships. We reviewed. We did a little design at the end. And that's the thing, right? You do a lot of work to be able to wind up and... Uh, oops. Where's our, yeah. To be able to wind up and then execute on an idea. Because this just this idea just happened really fast. Like you guys saw it happen in real time. A lot of wind up and then boom, go. If you, if you research a lot, understand your subject matter, you can't help but create. You just can't help it. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This was a lot of fun. Um, and again, anybody who has any video ideas, even if you put it in the live chat, also comment it on the video as well because uh, I want to be able to go back and see it and like very much visualize it because we've been doing live streams pretty much three times a week and uh, I want to start producing videos too because my channel looks empty. And because I, that's what I initially wanted to do, I wanted to make videos. Um, sick, sick, sick. We got Moth Moth. Looking forward to all the journey then. Just got into an animation program, so it shall be fun. Oh, fantastic. Mojo says, awesome stream. I learned a lot. Let's go. Colin says, thanks. You guys are sick. Okay, this was really fun. I love you guys. Um, don't forget, and if you're watching this back, we'll do a little outro. We'll do, we'll do an outro moment. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching the VOD, then thank you so much for getting to the end. You're sick. You're awesome. If you're watching live, you're a legend. Absolute legend. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for, you know, liking and, and all that stuff. The video, if you if you guys like the, the content. Um, and also, yeah, if you want to see the future streams, subscribe, hit the notifications, all that stuff. If, if you want, if you want to see more. Um, and uh, oh, Ash says, awesome stream. Let's go. HG, Nabs. Oh, dude, you guys are so nice. Sick. Um, epic. Yeah. I'm trying to teach the gaps. What's in the gaps, man? People don't teach this stuff. It, well, they kind of do. Feng Zhu does a little bit. A lot of bit, actually. Um, but yeah, you guys are awesome. And I will see you guys some Thursday. Thursday. Um, yeah. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.